One of the things I say to people is that whatever you think this museum is, it's different than that. And, uh, and that's usually what they find. The museum is a place where we tell stories. And I'm, I'm very attached to the whole concept of storytelling here. We tell the story of United States history. We tell the story of miniaturism and dollhouse collecting. And we tell the part of the story that's the most fun for the people who come here is that we tell the stories of the little people who live in the houses. So there are captions and a lot of times they're funny. It's a kind of looking in on other people's lives and, and seeing their foibles, seeing, seeing what they're doing, what, how they're playing, how they're working, what's, what's going on with them. It's, it's fun for people to see that people were thinking and feeling a lot of things a hundred years ago that are very similar to what we're thinking and feeling today in a different circumstance, in a different time, in different costumes, with different furniture, you know, but, but they were people just like we are. One of the things we wanted was that whenever you turn a corner around here, something happens. And, uh, and that was a, as much a physical, uh, visual matter as it was anything else. When you come into the museum, the, the first thing you see in the exhibition hall is a timeline of United States history. When you leave the timeline of U.S. history, you come into the village of Copper Hollow. And the village of Copper Hollow has city streets. In fact, it's got cobblestone floors. And you, you choose which way to go. There's not, just like if you visited a real little village, there's not a right or wrong way. On the outskirts of town, there's a Shaker village, which is kind of fun because there's a Shaker village outside of Danville at Pleasant Hill. Um, so you, you know, you, you just go up and down the streets. There's a mansion district, but when you cross the tracks, there's a rooming houses district in a poorer neighborhood. There's a factory district. What's most interesting to me is the, the layering of the storytelling. Uh, Lori and the other artists, my daughter included, uh, my daughter Hannah had a great deal to do with the early uh, exhibits in the museum. They layer in a kind of of visual storytelling that goes quite deep in these houses. This is a, a, among other things, it's a history museum, a museum of social history, and the, the dolls that exist in the museum are often uh, chosen, selected, even built to have uh, a human uh, uh, qualities. They're not about prettiness, they're about the life, the actual life that people lived in a town of this kind. The first thing that I think about when designing a building is who lives in it, and I'm talking about the little people. Who are the little people? They're not just random little people any more than I or anyone else is a random little person. We, we have personalities. We have socioeconomic backgrounds. We have preferences. Some have pets. Some like music. Some are very messy. Some are very neat. They have different relationships. Sometimes children may live with grandma and grandpa. I mean, everything is very, very specific to those people. Within businesses, there are some stores that are very upscale. There are some stores that are very casual, that are very even poor. In the rural district, there are, there are um, country stores that, that are very dingy. So all of those details have got to be decided upon before going in. What is that place? It's not just some kind of generic dollhouse. There's no such thing here as a generic choice. It's all specific. And the numbers of things, of objects that go into each room or into each store or into each building are huge. There may be tens of thousands of things in one dollhouse. It's, it's that number. But if you went to your house and started counting the numbers of things, the things that are stashed underneath the dresser, underneath the bed, that are piled high in certain places, you would find that we have many, 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 many objects more than what you would think of in any given place. This is very much a family museum. I run it. Uh, my two daughters have been very involved in it. And my husband teaches at Center College. And everybody works at the museum. We do the mowing. We do the landscaping. We do the buying and selling in the store. 
my younger daughter works at the cash register. I mean, it's, it's just very much a, a family-run business. And, and more than that, we all do a lot of brainstorming. It is a joy. I've often said that this was something that was going to make our family or break it, and here we are. We're still here, so uh, I think we're happy doing it, yeah. It's a lot of fun. I really like my parents. Um, it's, I think the museum is so unusual that it's really interesting to, to be here and see people come and experience it for the first time. A woman came in with her daughter, who was deaf, so they came in and, um, and they went through the museum. The little girl just loved it. She was probably eight. And when they came out of the museum, they were leaving and the girl signed something to her mother. And her mother told my mom, she says she wants to live here. <laughs> there are certain things we hear all the time, over and over again. Probably the commonest phrase is, that's amazing. That was amazing. I can't believe it. That's something that we hear every day. As you, as you go through the museum, there are always new surprises. You turn a corner and there's a kind of, wow, oh, something different kind of, kind of factor. And the museum is always changing. There are still uh, plenty of opportunities for, for growth and change and uh, uh, creative uh, development in the museum. And uh, again, I just, uh, I'm holding on to my wife and, uh, and she's leading us where she wants to take us.